Okay, in this video, we are doing number 15 from assignment three. Uh, we're trying to find and classify the critical points of this function. I pulled this out of the previous video because this one um, is like next level challenging, I guess. Uh, it's not really harder, it just has a lot of work involved. So uh, let's see, first thing we gotta do is we gotta find uh, partial x, right? So uh, this I'm gonna treat it as a product where the first thing is x, y, and then the second thing is e to the negative x squared minus y squared. So we're gonna have a uh, first, which is x, y. Derivative of the second with respect to um, x is gonna be negative two x, and then e to the negative x squared minus y squared, uh, plus second, which is the e to the negative x squared minus y squared, times derivative of the first with respect to x, which is just gonna be y. Okay, so then uh, you can kind of clean this up, I guess. Uh, you can factor out a y and an e to the negative x squared minus y squared, which will give you y e to the negative x squared minus y squared, quantity negative 2x squared plus 1. I definitely encourage you to factor it because you're going to have to set this equal to 0, and if it's not factored, good luck. We've got to find partial y, which is like, by symmetry, almost exactly the same thing. So partial y, again, first and second, so x, y, and then e to the whatever. So it's going to be uh, first derivative of the second with respect to y is going to be negative 2y e to the negative x squared minus y squared plus second, which is the e thing, derivative of the first with respect to y is just x. So as I said, by symmetry, you get almost the exact same thing, and you want to take advantage of symmetry when you can. Factor this one, you can take out x e to the negative x squared minus y squared, and you can see we get almost an identical thing where all the x's and y's have just been swapped with each other. All right, to find critical points, we have to set partial x and partial y equal to zero, we have to be careful when we find the zeros of this thing, or we have to at least really think about it. Um, so if we have partial x equals zero, uh, y could definitely equal zero, right? So that'll give us y equals zero. e to the negative x squared minus y squared can never equal zero, so it's not contributing anything in this case. And then uh, we have this negative x, negative two x squared plus one is equal to zero. So that gives us um, just x squared is one half, which means that x is gonna be uh, plus or minus and then one over the square root of two, which I'm gonna write as root two over two. Okay, so really we got three things out of there. We got y equals zero, we got x equals root two over two, um, and we got x equals negative root two over two. We also have to set partial y equal to zero. Let's see what's happening there. So if partial y equals zero, uh, you kind of symmetrically get the same things again. Like you, you, from here you get x equals zero. We know that this e thing can never be zero, and then here, we're gonna get y squared is um, one half, so y is plus or minus root two over two. All right, now we gotta pair these things up, right? So uh, partial x, root two over two can make that equal zero. Simultaneously, we need partial y to equal zero. So if you have root two over two for x, you can have plus or minus root two over two for y. So we can have the positive, we could also have the negative. You're not gonna have root two over two for x and then uh, x equals zero, like that doesn't make any sense. So when positive root two over two, we can match that with plus or minus root two over two for y. With negative, we can also match that with plus or minus root two over two. So we'll get these. And then if x is equal to zero, uh, or if y is equal to zero, the only thing you can pair with is x is equal to zero. So we also get that. So we actually have five points and you really have to think it through, which is part of why I wanted this to be its own kind of separate thing. All right, now we gotta find, um, cause we're gonna try to find D, which is partial XX times partial YY minus partial XY squared. So since we're looking for that, um, I'm gonna copy over partial X to begin with. We need partial XX. So the derivative of this thing with respect to X we're gonna do a first and a second. First, I'm gonna consider y e to the negative x squared minus y squared, um, because in terms of partial x, x, y is just a constant, so like, why not? Um, so we'll have first, and that'll be this. Derivative of the second with respect to x is just negative four x, plus uh, the second, which is negative two x squared plus one. Derivative of the first with respect to x is gonna be y e to the negative x squared minus y squared times negative 2x. So I'm going to write uh, negative 2xy e to the negative x squared minus y squared. All right, so that's partial xx. We should um, factor this thing, I guess. Uh, so 
let's see, let's see how it factors. Uh, you can take out e to the negative, uh, okay, you can take out, <laughs> what can you take out? Uh, you can take out y, e to the negative x squared minus y squared. Possibly other things, but I'm gonna start with that. y, e to the negative x squared minus y squared, um, which will leave me with negative four x, and then because I took out y, e to the negative x squared, I'm left with this and this. Um, and I'm gonna distribute the negative two x there, so I will get plus four x cubed, and then minus two x. Okay, and then finally, if we clean this up, we will get this, negative 2xy e to the negative x squared minus y squared, quantity 3 minus 2x squared. Fortunately, we just have to plug into that, so like it doesn't really matter how ugly it is. Although if you think about those points, uh, they're not the best thing in the world to plug in. Still though, uh, not the end of the world. All right, to find partial yy, we need to copy this over. And remember, by symmetry, we're basically gonna get the same thing where all the x's and y's are just sort of like swapped out for each other. And so because of that, uh, we have, uh, what, am I, what am I doing there? I think, I don't know why I highlighted that. Oh, I do know why I highlighted that. I'm, I'm highlighting the fact that it's just, it's just partial X with all the X's and Y's switched. So I actually like hand wrote this out ages ago and I'm just recording it now. So it's a little hard to figure out like what my brain was thinking at the time. But if you look at that, you can see they're the same. They're just like spelled oppositely which means we can take advantage of that um, to find partial YY. Just look at partial XX and essentially switch every x to a y, um, and it will give us what we want. So partial y, y is this. You don't have to use symmetry to do these. You could just do the work again, um, but it will save you a lot of time, I think. All right, we also need partial x, y, or partial y, x. It does not make a difference. Um, so I'm gonna find partial, uh, partial y, x. So I'm gonna start with partial y, and then find the derivative of it with respect to x. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna find partial y, x. I do not know why I decided to do this, but anyway, uh, if we find this, we need the derivative of partial y with respect to x. Okay, so uh, we got uh, that. That's just a constant as far as we're concerned, right? The negative two y squared plus one is just a constant. So really, uh, that can just kind of like sit there and then we will do the product rule on the remaining part, which is gonna be uh, x times e to the negative x squared minus y squared, right? So first, derivative of the second will be x. Derivative of the second with respect to x is negative two x e to the negative x squared minus y squared. Plus second, which is the e thing. Derivative of the first with respect to x is just one. Um, so, you know, times one. Okay, and then uh, we can factor this because there's, I mean, there's not a lot of factoring, but you can take out e to the negative x squared minus y squared from like both things in that second set of parentheses there. So this guy's still here. Um, and then these can be factored out. So e to the negative x squared minus y squared. And then we are left with negative two x squared plus one. Okay, so why are we doing all this? We're doing this because we need to calculate d, which is partial xx partial yy minus partial xy squared or yx squared or xy times yx, any way you wanna do it. Um, so we really need all of these so that we can calculate this. So I'm gonna copy these over to another page and then we'll actually start doing the second derivatives test. Maybe you can see why I wanted this to be its own video. Um, so we have this and we also have our points. All right, here goes, um, zero, zero. Uh, if you plug in, we'll just like partial xx because it has a factor of x and y, and yy has a factor of x and y. Those are both zero. And then when you plug into yx, you get like one times one times one. So this ultimately is just negative one. I don't think I'm gonna walk through substituting into all of them because like that's kind of just algebra and I will put the values. Um, I don't know. All right, so we got that d is less than zero, which means that you just have a saddle point. Um, which is great because we don't need to figure out if it's a max or a minute. It, it is a saddle point and we can move on. All right, we've got to figure this out at root two over two, negative root two over two. All right, so what you basically do is you sub in, right? So uh, we're gonna get negative two, uh, negative one half, e to the negative first, uh, and then two. Okay, 
Uh, and then that's that's partial xx. Partial yy, we're going to get, uh, you'll notice a lot of symmetry here, uh, negative 2, a negative 1 half. We're going to get an e to the negative first, and then we're going to get a 2 again. Uh, and then partial xy, when we sub in, uh, we end up with 0. Not really sure why we end up with 0 there. Oh, because uh, when you square 1 over root 2, you get 2. So you have negative 2 times 1 half. Sorry, when you squared 1 over root 2, you get 1 half. So we have negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. So we're just getting 0. Uh, all right, so that's 0. So which means overall, we are getting uh, 4e to the negative second, which is definitely greater than 0. So now we have to look at the concavity of the trace, which means we look at partial xx or partial yy. It does not make a difference. I'm going to look at partial xx. And also, I'm going to realize that in the process of finding d, because of the way I did the work, I found partial xx, right? It's, it's right there. So I actually already know that this is going to be uh, 2e to the negative first, which is greater than 0, which means your trace is concave up, which means you have a relative minimum. OK, the work for negative root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2 is identical. So if you do it, you will get this, you will get this, and your conclusion will be, again, a relative minimum at negative root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. Carrying on. This is a big problem. Like, I don't, I don't usually give tests on this stuff. If I did, I do not think I would give this question, but, like, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what class you're in. I don't know what your professors think you should be doing. Um, all right, we're going to keep going. So we're going to check uh, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So first, we're going to get a negative 2. We're going to get a 1 half. We're going to get an e to the negative first. We're going to get a 2. So that's partial xx, which will potentially be relevant if we get a um, positive value of d here. Uh, partial yy by symmetry, again, going to be basically the same thing. So we get this. Um, overall, this gives us... Uh, for e to the negative second, which is greater than zero. So now we look at partial xx, which we calculated in the process, right? That's right here. So that's going to give us negative 2e to the negative first, which is negative. So our trace is concave down, which means we are at a relative maximum. All of the work for uh, negative and negative is exactly the same. So negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2 gives you the same values, the same conclusion. There you go. Okay, so we went through, I think, all five of the points. So I'm going to summarize them on the next page so you can just like look at it. So we had a saddle point, two relative minimums, two relative maximums. It's a lot of work. It's not that bad, but I, it is a little intimidating because partial X and partial Y were like pretty, uh, pretty complicated, I guess. They had a lot going on. Um, but don't worry about it, because that e to the negative x squared minus y squared, which is the thing that makes it really scary looking, is never zero anyway. So it didn't really impact anything. Anyway, I hope this was helpful, and good luck.